All right, this is Black Hand Print Mafia. I'm RJ Roger, and what we're going to talk about today is the Kansas City, or the suspected Kansas City, New England, and Cleveland crime families, okay? So, as you all know, I put out a video recently uh, on the current active families that are operating and function in America today. I also listed all of their bosses. If you haven't seen it, check the video out. Um, now, I typically don't do follow-up videos, but I think there was enough comments, enough feedback that came from viewers that it's worth um, following up on some of the comments, okay? So, most of the uh, people who did not agree all right. There was a significant number of people who did agree. And there were some people who did not agree. Um, a lot of the pushback that came from the people who disagreed is that they believed that there is currently an active Kansas City family and active New England family. All right. Now, there could be both of those families fully functioning and operating in the U.S. right now, I just don't have the information to prove it, all right? I get slaughtered on this channel if I can't prove something. So, the 10 families that I did list, okay, I can prove it if somebody pushes back because there are um, open investigations, confidential informants, press and media reports, um, recent indictments, recent arrests, recent convictions, um, so all of that is a way that I can say, okay, there could be something functioning, something going on here, but I have to have that. I can't just say it. it has to be something that I can point at and say, here's the evidence. Um, could there be a New England faction? Could there be a Kansas City faction? Someone said, well, just 10 years ago, this happened. Well, 10 years ago is not current. I can't use 10 year dated information to say that something's happening now. I had other people that say, well, um, my brother's cousin, sister's mother knows somebody from a distant relative that said that there's a New England faction. That's not evidence, okay? Hearsay is not evidence, all right? Um, so when I put the list of the top 10 together, what I looked for was Something that could have been open within the past 18 to 24 months. Um, now, I did read what the suspicions are. People believe who people believe the boss is. I just can't find anything that shows an active, organized crime family. So, I made a phone call to a very good source. Now, I will note, when I put that list of the top 10 active or the 10 active families remaining. I made phone calls, I did extensive research, I read everything, looked for open indictments, read court documents. I really put a lot of effort into coming up with that list. I called other mob historians, criminologists, people who study crime. Um, I even called people that I know that have connections in that world, people who are former members in that world. And I so I didn't just willy-nilly throw this list together, okay? But I will say, again, this is open for discussion. Doesn't mean I'm right. Doesn't mean you're right. No more than it means I'm wrong and you're wrong, okay? It's open for discussion. My research and with the most credible information available suggests there's 10 active families and I would and I don't know what the strength levels of those 10 families are. So, I made a phone call after I read some of the comments. And what somebody told me, a very very credible person told me is that in regards to Kansas City, New England and Cleveland, there is possibly this is what I was told. There is possibly a few guys left from a couple crews that are working together. So those crews could have been 
former New England Capos, New England crews, a crew that used to work with the uh, uh, New England family or the Kansas City family. And it's a very big distinction between crew, family, okay? Um, Cosa Nostra family is an organized thing. It has a hierarchy system. It has rules, regulations, and order. A crew is a very different thing. A great example would be Lucky Luciano's crew before it aligned with um, Joe Mazzaria. So he was a crew. That's all he was. It was him and a crew of his guys. He worked with Frank Costello, Meyer Lansky, Vito Genovese, Bugsy Siegel, Joe O'Donis. They were controlling. They had an operation that was bringing in millions. They were um, paying off politicians, law officials, controlling gambling operations, um, underground carpet joints and speakeasies, uh, whiskey. They were very big bootleggers. Uh, Meyer Lansky and Bugsy Siegel had a major protection racket. So, but they were just a crew. They didn't have a system of you're the boss, I'm the underboss, you're the uh, consigliere, you're a soldier. They were a crew of guys working together and putting everything they had in the pot. Now, Mazzaria and Maranzano were much, much bigger. And the easiest way to explain it is that, and I talked about this before, Cosa Nostra is a thing of evolution. So you have small little gangs, two, three, four, five people that merge with another gang of two, three, four, five people and they come together. Now that's a 10 member gang. And now that 10 member gang is bigger than all the other two or three or four, five member gangs that are around. Eventually that 10 member gang goes to this gang that's five people and says, hey, why don't you come with me? You guys are doing good. With our backing, you're gonna get bigger and stronger and we need more men. Now you have a 15 member gang, okay? And then eventually that 15 member gang is so much bigger than all these groups of two and three or four and five. So, but the two and three and four and five member gangs are still trying to make a nickel, still trying to increase their standing, but it's harder because the big guys, the 15 member gang can push them out anytime they want. Eventually what happens is all the small gangs get swallowed up by the big gangs and you get less small gangs and um, uh, uh, just one or two big gangs left that are a big collection of all those small gangs. So what Joe Mazzaria and Salvatore Maranzano were is big groups that was organized, that had hierarchy structures, that had, you know, um, people who were more important than others. But that Mazzaria family is filled with a whole bunch of small gangs and cliques of people. In every family, there's probably three or four guys in every major organized crime family that knew each other for a very long time. Family could be 200 people, but each one person has four people that he spends most of his time with, most of his day with. It's the only group of people that he trusts. He works with the others, but he trusts just those three or four. But he's working in a conglomerate of 200 people. It's an organized system, okay? So if you take a look at the Gambino family, well, before I jump to that, I want to, so, because that's a weird way to end the story. Luciano was an independent gang. He wasn't with either of them. So he was getting pressure. Someone, at the, they were telling him, you have to pick a side or you're isolated and you're alone. And he knew it. He might have had 20 or 30 people in his organization. Um, and he can't fight off a two or 300 member gang. So the big gang, Mazaria, the first gang he joined with, took Lucky's whole entire operation and merged it in with him. Okay? So, but all Lucky really was, was a crew. He had a crew of guys and they worked together. 
All right. So when I made the phone call and asked about, hey, what do you think about an operating Kansas City family? What do you think about an operating New England family? What I was told is there could be some crew members left that used to be around that came together and they are working together. But that's very different. And the example I'm going to use is let's take a look at the Gambino crime family and let's just look at what we'll call five crews. OK, so Sal Franco, Capo in Manhattan, um, Andy Campos, Camp, uh, Capo over Brooklyn, I'm sorry, over the Bronx, um, Sonny Giuliano, Brooklyn, Capo, Tommy Sneakers, Queens, Capo, and uh, Frank Camuso, Staten Island. All right, let's just say for the sake of this video that those are five crews all operating within an organized family, okay? Um, so Sal Franco, he had, you know, he was a union racketeer. Um, he was a regular at the Raven Night. Um, he was the nephew to Joe Akari, um, close relationship with the Gotties, you know, so he's controlling Manhattan, all right? This is what's so much different about a family versus a crew, okay? If Sal Franco, somebody, one of his soldiers say, hey, Sal, I know about a big score in the Bronx, okay? There's a guy that has $700,000 in the safe in his basement. I want to go get that safe, okay? Sal has to make a phone call to Andy. Hey, Andy, one of my guys has a big score over there in your territory, okay? That's organized crime where where there are territory lines. You can't just cross into someone's territory. So Sal has to call Andy. Hey, Andy, can I have one of my guys, two of my guys work in your territory? We got a big score over there. Don't worry, I'll send you 15% of the score. Andy can say, nope, I got guys already working on that. Or he can say, sure, go ahead. Open territory for you. Come on in, do what you got to do. Follow up with me after you're done. All right. That's organized crime where Andy's not just Watson in the Manhattan territory that's controlled by Sal and saying, this is what I, I'm just going to do what I want over here. Uh, no different with Sonny Giuliano in Brooklyn. He's not just going to go into a uh, Bronx territory controlled by Andy and say, I want to do something over here. There has to be sit downs, discussions, plans, um, respect. Hey, um, Tommy Sneakers in Queens or Frank Camuso in Staten Island. Nobody's walking into anybody's territories. There is jurisdictions. There is, and on top of all of that, you have an administration who's approving and disapproving and having sit down. So you have a boss, a consigliere, an underboss who say, uh, Campos once is having a beef with Giuliano saying, Hey, uh, Campos might go to the consigliere or go to the underboss and say, Hey, I have this big score in Brooklyn. I'm getting pushed back from Giuliano. He's, he's moving in on my score. I called him. I did everything the right way. Why is he pushing back on me? Um, now there's an administration that can say, Hey, Giuliano, stand down, Sonny, stand down and let Campos do this. It's good for the family. Or we could say, Andy, this isn't your territory. We're going to let Sonny handle this. Okay. And then there's nothing Andy can do. All right. So in a family, you have territory lines, you have a system of order, and you have policies and procedures. That's an organized crime family. I don't know that that's, is, that that's what is existing in Kansas City or New England, where you have various capos controlling various territories. I don't know that there's an administration with a set of capos and a regulatory system. I don't know that that is probably existing. Could be, don't know. But I take the position, no, because I can't find evidence to suggest.
So now look at this. So let's say there's a collapse of the administration, all right? Um, civil war in the family, all right? That happened in the Bonanno family. That has happened in the Colombo family, the famous banana split. Um, so cop families, uh, the family splits. Three of the capos go with the underboss who's trying to usurp power from the boss. The other three uh, uh, capos in the family go with the boss and now there's a war and they're fighting and by the end of it the administration is split the family never heals and uh, people go to jail things like that so you, you end up with uh, there's no more organized no more organization within the system the whole system is broken there isn't a boss there isn't a consigliere there isn't an underboss there, there isn't territory lines there isn't a process to be able to sit down and discuss how something's going to be resolved but let's say andy Campos is still around lorenzo's off in jail let's say um, um michael paradiso he's in hiding um everyone's trying to come after him let's say that um, the underboss is, you know, just got sentenced to 60 years um, and uh, the crews are broken up and there's just no organization anymore. There could be, and now let's also put 30 years have passed, okay? 20 years have passed. Um, but there's still guys lingering around. Andy Campos is on the street. Uh, Tori Lacasio is on the street. Richard Martino is on the street. Vincent Fiore is on the street. Um, and then Frank Camuso, even though he used to be um, a capo of his own crew, his whole crew's broken and they're in exile and no one can find them. And then it's throwing even John Rizzo, okay? So those guys are all still around, but the functioning organized family is no longer there where you have a hierarchy and an, and an administration. All those guys come together, let's suppose, and they start working together. There really isn't an organized family anymore. Again, be no family, but these crew members come together and they're working together. Andy Campos is still controlling that crew that he was responsible for. Let's say these guys were in his crew and a couple other lingering guys came over and said, Andy, let me work with you so we can still make some money and stuff like that. That's a crew that's operating. But it's not a big organized system. I kind of take the position that this is what is happening in Philadelphia and New Jersey, where there might not really even be fully functioning families. There could honestly just be crew members or a crew, especially Philadelphia. That's probably just that uh, that a crew of guys who are longtime friends that work together and they're operating under the Philadelphia flag. OK, that's kind of the position that my source was taking, that there could be some old crews around um, in Kansas City and New England. But is there a fully functioning family of organized crime where there's territory lines, where there's sit downs, there's a process for putting someone on the shelf for uh, authorizing a killing, let's say, for um, um, settling disputes. I don't think that that is happening in New England and Kansas City and definitely not Cleveland. Could be wrong. I don't know, but that's my position. And that was the position of my source. That And what sometimes we confuse as a public who's just watching these things is that we think, uh, you know, we know Andy's back out on the streets. We know he's sitting at the social club, meeting with guys. That doesn't mean that's a functioning family with an administration above him. Could just mean he's operating his own crew. All right? So that's the way I would break it down. That's how I would, uh, that's the position I would take on the Kansas City family and the New England family. And that's even the position I would take on some of the, uh, 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 families I even spoke about in my top 10. The more I think about it, I really think that's probably what's going on with Philadelphia. And I think that's probably also what's going on with um, Jersey. Um, I would say maybe not Buffalo, highly likely not Chicago, Chicago possibly, but probably not Chicago, probably not Detroit, 
probably not Buffalo and likely not the uh, the Big Five. So there's probably, in my estimate, uh, there's probably a fully functioning administration and a system of order with probably eight families. The five in New York, Detroit, Chicago, and Buffalo. Um, could be some other stuff. I have no way of knowing. It's just uh, just the way my research has led me. Let me know what you think. Black Hand Print Mafia, I'm R.J. Roger. Got a great book coming out, The Dawn. It'll be in stores this year. Please support the book when it hits stores. Um, leave your comments. Let me know what you think. Peace and love, and I'll see you next week.